Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 12947 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a timetable for the stage three consideration of the Children, Care and Justice Scotland Bill. I ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press the request to speak button. I call on George Adam, uh, Minister, to move the motion. Uh, sorry, Minister, I'll take Mr Whitfield's point of order first. I'm, I'm very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I seek your guidance in relation to Rule 910.5 of the Standing Orders, which talks about the proper form of amendments to be put, and in particular the use of language other than English. Indeed, there is a publication policy by the SPCB that dates from 2018 that states that the working language of the Parliament is English and that the Parliament legislates in English. There is provision for another language to be used where appropriate and indeed prior approval of the head of chamber and reporting as was called then um, has been sought and indeed I've had very useful correspondence with the Minister for Parliamentary Affairs about why Latin has been used in an amendment that was filed um, quite late in the filing period and I seek your guidance as to whether or not indeed prior approval was sought for the use as I understand why it has been used but procedurally, my understanding is, and I seek your guidance on this, that to be in an appropriate form, that guidance needs to have been sought first. I'm grateful. I thank Mr Whitfield for his point of order. What I would say that, uh, is that in relation to today's proceedings, I can confirm that the Latin terms in the amendment concerned are precise terms used in the Criminal Procedure Scotland Act 1995 and are consequently used as standard in criminal proceedings. There is no suitable English translation which would be commonly understood. However, I recognise that it would be helpful to reflect on the issue raised by the member in relation to the SPCB policy concerned. Thank you. So if I could now call in Minister George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer. I'm trying to think of my schoolboy Latin and try to say moved, but I'll just say moved. <laughs> Thank you, Minister. I think we'll just stick to the English from now on. Thank you very much, to the extent possible. Uh, no member has asked to speak against the motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 12947 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. The next item of business is stage three proceedings on the Children, Care and Justice Scotland Bill in dealing, uh, and in dealing with the amendments members should have. The bill as amended at stage two, that is SP Bill 22A, the Marshall List and the groupings of amendments. The division bell will sound and proceedings will be suspended for around five minutes for the first division of the stage three. The period of voting for the first division will be 45 seconds. Thereafter, I will allow a voting period of one minute for the first division after a debate. Members who wish to speak in the debate on any group of amendments should press the request to speak buttons or enter the letters RTS in the chat function as soon as possible after I call the group. And members should now refer to the marshalled list of amendments. And with that, I turn to group one, rights and welfare of children. I call amendment 40 in the name of Martin Whitfield, grouped with amendments as shown in the groupings, and Martin Whitfield to move Amendment 40 and to speak to all amendments in the group. I'm very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I intend to speak to amendments 40, 43, 45, 47, 63, 64, 65, 66 and 67 in my name. The purpose of this bill, which is um, very succinctly described in the, the revised explanatory notes that attach it, um, is to deal with the treatment of children within the criminal justice system and the care of children involved in the criminal justice system and the interrelationship between that care system and the criminal justice system. It is a lengthy bill that covers a large number of matters, but at its heart is something which I hope that we can all agree, that the young people and children of Scotland deserve a level of respect and support to facilitate their development and indeed to make Scotland the best place to grow up. The purposes of these amendments in the main in this section um, do so before section one because they underpin what should be the foundational elements of this bill. That is promoting the well-being and the rights of children. 
Indeed, it was just earlier this year that the UNCRC was passed and has come in to enactment, which enshrines the importance that we in Scotland feel about the rights and the welfare of um, our young people. And it is to that purpose that these sections apply. Amendment 40 highlights the importance of this purpose underpinning the whole structure of the Bill and therefore more importantly under underpinning the structure of how the Bill will be implemented. I would hope that it is not beyond agreement across this chamber that a well-being and rights approach is the way that we should view all legislation that potentially affects our young people and indeed children. At stage two, I moved these amendments, and indeed, at the time, I was um, disappointed in the Minister's then response, where there was a, um, highlighting an apparent contradiction, being, being seeking the nuance that the, that the Bill has and its amendments contain, and suggesting at that time that this um, amendment, in the form of 40, would blur the overall view. My submission to this chamber, and indeed out with this chamber, is that if we cannot set out at the earliest outset of a bill the importance of the well-being and the rights of the child, their rights held at a United Nations level, held at a level here in Scotland, and indeed should be held at a level where every young person lives, then we are doing a disservice to our young people. The other amendments in my name insert effectively welfare and rights where it's appropriate to do so. Um, and in, section, uh, in my amendment 45, um, I invite the Scottish ministers to make regulations that would allow for um, young people to give views in a manner preferential to them. In our system in which adults um, travel through in a whole variety um, of means, there is an understanding that the format in which discussions are held, the format in which papers are served, the format in which arguments are resonated, are such that that adult can understand. There is a much greater pressure when young people and children are involved, depending on their age. And I think it is not without some merit that um, Scotland accepts that we may have to amend the way things are explained to young people for the very specific young person that sits in front of it. There is, um, I would say, an expectation, but there is a reality known to parents that you have to talk to your children in a way that they can understand and be part of the decisions. There is an expectation on our teaching profession that they do the same, and that actually the style and format that is used is directed towards that individual child rather than just a whole group. Amendment 45 makes that suggestion. Um, to the government, and I hope they will seriously consider it. Other amendments in, the sec in, in, in this list, including Amendment um, 47, relate to um, the compulsory supervision orders that um, a panel may or may not opt to put in place. And the amendment requests that the child who is subject of monitoring and review on that be basis, where they have experienced trauma, where they have experienced domestic or other violence and indeed been the victim of crime, excuse or harm or have mental health issues or learning disabilities or vulnerabilities, that that is taken into account and identified. Hence the list that exists in that amendment. With regard to... Apologies, let me pause at that moment. I will, I will pause at that point because... I, uh, sorry, no, Amendment 63... I need to speak to in relation to inserting again welfare and rights because that should underpin, underpin our approach to all children. Um, again, with Amendment 65, that's simply a tidying amendment in, in relation to the requirements. Amendment 66 requires a court that's dealing with the child as an offender to allow them again to give views in a manner that's preferable to them. That is extending the right so that the court can hear from a young person or child in a way that is most suitable to them, rather than, rather than the young person being expected to adopt an attitude or approach that is more right for an adult. The final amendment that I wish to speak to is in relation to 67, which is an amendment that takes provision for a court dealing with the child as their offender, not just to hear the views of the child if it's satisfied that the child is not capable of forming a view, 
but starting with the presumption that the young person is able to do that. Because there will unfortunately be situations where our young people come into this system and they are not in a position to understand what's happening to them and we require the ability um, of the court to deal with that. So on that point at the end I will deal with the other matters but I'm grateful Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you Mr Whitfield. I call Ruth McGuire to speak to Amendment 84 and other amendments in the group. Ms McGuire. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I intend to speak to Amendment 84 in my name. Um, Scotland is the first UK nation to incorporate UNCRC into Scots law, and that pleasing headline is only worth something if it makes a material difference to our children. I think that we all agree on the importance of upholding and promoting the rights of all children, whether they are in direct contact with the system as witnesses, victims or perpetrators, or are impacted because of a family member. I want to acknowledge the complexity of that and, of course, that children can be both victims and perpetrators of harmful behaviour. I think it is fair to say that the balance of this bill in terms of all children um, and their competing rights was greatly improved through the committee process. And I appreciate committee colleagues' willingness to work across party lines and also want to acknowledge and thank the Scottish Government for the distance that they have travelled. The aim of Amendment 84 is to place a duty on the Scottish Government to report on the rights of all children who come into contact with the system, with the purpose of ensuring that should the rights of victims be, be being compromised, the agencies and government are held to account and it is clear where changes need to be made to practice. I acknowledge and accept that my amendment is quite broadly drawn and it would have implications for all criminal justice agencies as well as children's hearing system. This was intentional and in response to what I have witnessed during this bill's progression and the opaque manner uh, in which the sometimes complex ecosystem of human rights are prioritised at the moment. In this place, we have to get past the easy and pleasing support of specific slogans, campaigns or campaign groups and get really serious about action and accountability. I believe the reporting duty that I propose would help in that regard. Now, I do appreciate that there is work ongoing in this area, specifically around the UNCRC and a children's rights scheme. It would be helpful to know from the Children's Minister how advanced this work is and when it is likely to make a difference to Scotland's children. Presiding officer, I also understand there are a number of reporting amendments lodged. I will listen carefully to colleagues and in particular to the Minister. And If there is an amendment that is more suitable in achieving the aims, we will not be pressing mine. Thank you, Ms McGuire. and I call Ros McCall. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I'd like to say from the outset that we as a group will be supporting all the amendments in the group and I've just heard that you're not um, maybe going ahead to, to, to push that. But amendments 40, 43, 63 in the name of Martin Whitfield on adding children's rights to the stipulated welfare of children is of paramount importance. While it's right to say that the Minister at Stage 2 did respond to similar amendments that the rights of an individual young person's of an individual young person's welfare can clearly come in conflict. I join with other members in struggling to see an instance where the decision would be that their welfare should, not take, should take priority over their fundamental rights. I'm therefore pleased to see that these amendments have been moved back here at stage three and we will be supporting them. Um, I'm going on to speak to uh, Ruth McGuire's mentions on 80, uh, Amendment 84 on review of the children's rights. I fundamentally believe that we must continue to assess this process of changes that we're being asked to vote for this afternoon. Not only assess how the bill will operate in practice, but how any alterations on the impact of victims' rights and experiences, how the rights of all children involved in hearings and criminal proceedings are affected, and how changes to legislation affect other children who may be on the peripheral, but whom the bill will have a bearing on. It's also been apparent through the stages of the bill there is a concern around implementation of the bill in practice and that sufficient resources provided at the right time will actually be forthcoming. So we're looking at a balance to ensure there are su sufficient volunteers for all the system changes in the children's hearing panel, increased retention of number of social workers, local authority upscaling, increase the number of foster carers, residential placement safeguarding, etc. And all of that needs to be reviewed and uh, we, would been, we would have been supporting the Amendment 84 in, in that case. Thank you. Thank you, Ms McCall. And I call Willie Rennie. 
Like the Children's Commissioner, I am supportive of Amendment 45 on the commencement of Section 3 of the Children Act from 2020. It, this strengthens the children's rights to participate in hearings and express their views. But in truth, we should not be in the position where it requires additional legislation four years on to bring this into force. Children's rights should not be delayed. I am opposed, however, to Martin Whitfield's Amendment 47. It is well intentioned, but I am persuaded by the Children's Commissioner that the amendment duplicates the existing role of public authorities in the GERFEC framework. I am disappointed that Ruth Maguire is not going to be pressing her amendments, obviously because she has not got the government's support, because I think there is some merit in her amendments. I do accept her point that it is quite wide-ranging, but we should be trying to get the best intelligence possible about the impact on victims. On reporting requirements more generally, Victim Support Scotland have identified a significant lack of information and data relating to victims' experiences of the children's hearing system and case outcomes for victims. Ruth Maguire's amendments in this group, Amendment 48 and later on in further groups, would have gone some way to improve that understanding. So I am disappointed she is not pressing, but I fully understand her position. Thank you, Mr Rennie. And I call the Minister, Natalie Dunn. Thank you, President Officer. Amendment 40 is almost identical to one at stage two that was pressed by Mr Whitfield and voted against by the committee. And I reiterate what I said then about the government commitment to promoting children's rights, as evidenced by forthcoming commencement on the UN Convention on, of the Rights of the Child Act 2024, and our commitment to keep the promise. Whilst I understand and share the sentiment behind Amendment 40, the Government's position has not changed. The long title of the Bill already lists its purposes, as do the accompanying documents and ministerial evidence to Committee and statements in Parliament. A purpose clause such as this is simply not necessary or appropriate. It does not work in a Bill of this nature. The Bill contains almost no freestanding self-contained provisions. Instead, it amends 20 other pieces of legislation. Inserting a purpose statement like this at the outset blurs the required nuances and leaves too many unanswered questions as to how it would apply to those enactments. Some of those other enactments already contain their own overarching statements of purpose or of general principles, and it is not clear how this amendment would sit with those. But as I have said, these aims are clear as a matter of established government policy and action. Therefore, I cannot support Amendment 40. Yes, I will. I thank the Minister for taking the intervention on that point. But, but I'm challenged here because I, I think it's really, really key that the, the rights of children, the well-being of children, all through the system is really, really important. And the Minister will be aware of some of the concerns that have been raised by um, witnesses to the committee around capacity. So surely stating this on the face of the bill that the well-being of children and rights of children are at the forefront of this mean that even if capacity were stretched, these things cannot be compromised. Does the Minister not accept that that would be a useful thing to put on the bill for that reason? Minister. Again, as I have said, I appreciate the sentiments around this, but I think that that sort of... Um, the, the support for children's rights is, is throughout the bill. I don't think it needs to be stated at the beginning in this purpose clause. As I've said, I, I don't think it works for this specific bill, and that is the government's position on it. Turning to Amendment 43, this would change the focus of the test to be applied across the scope of the Children's Hearing Scotland Act 2011 Act. It would, by definition, imply that a child's rights are to be given the same weight as their welfare. We know in some cases this simply cannot happen as there may be an unavoidable conflict between welfare and rights. Welfare, we must remember, is the primary indicator for safeguarding children referred to the hearing system, and it has been for many years. More broadly, on the issue of rights and existing requirements, the Children's Hearing or Court will already consider the potential impact of any decision as they already have extensive obligations under ECHR and UNCRC. As public authorities, they must act compatibly. Therefore, the necessary balance of rights is already achieved under the existing provisions. And on that basis, that Amendment 43 would distort that balance. I can't support it. 
On Amendment 45, members will be aware that the recent Hearings for Children report included a recommendation to commence Section 3 of the Children's Scotland Act 2020, and the Government accepted this recommendation without qualification. Assessment work is underway to establish what other provisions of the 2020 Act, in addition to Section 3, could be commenced. And we're expediting this work, and I'd be happy to continue to provide updates to the Education, Children and Young People Committee on the progress with that. Martin Whitfield. I'm very grateful to the Minister taking intervention on that point. I understand that she's expediting this. Can she actually give us a more firmer timeline about when that will be expedited to? Minister. I would not be able to give that at present. This work is underway, but as I've said, I'm more than happy to keep the committee and the member updated. It's likely that court rules in Scottish courts and tribunal service case management systems will require changes, and it's essential that this preparatory work is able to continue so that we commence when the responsible agencies are ready. So I urge the member not to press Amendment 45. Amendment 47 also replicates an amendment not passed at Stage 2. It includes a very broad range of conditions for considering monitoring and review if a child is not in need of compulsory measures. I am very conscious that this amendment would likely apply to virtually any child referred. We do not need to legislate for further intervention or monitoring where a hearing reached this conclusion. Local authorities already provide support and guidance to children and their families on a voluntary basis, and this amendment would not change or enhance that. To act as set out in the amendment could potentially result in disproportionate interference with the child's rights. The principle of minimum intervention, only making children subject to compulsory measures where this is absolutely necessary, is a key aspect of the children's hearing system. Ensuring that services and supports are available to children, young people and adults who require these has similarly been a long-standing requirement of Scottish statute. Our recent commitments in responding to the Promise and the Hearings for Children report will go further in this area if necessary, following engagement and consultation. Therefore, again, I cannot support Amendment 47. Amendments 63, 64, 65, 66 and 67 would place a number of new duties on courts to consider the rights of a child offender as a primary consideration alongside welfare. This includes further requirements to have regard to the child's rights and views. Section 14 of the Bill already makes provision for the Court to have regard to the safeguarding of a child offender's welfare. Amendments 63 and 64 seem unnecessary and could result in confusion. Courts already act under HR and UNCRC duties to act compatibly. Moreover, the amendments do not define a child's rights, nor do they elaborate on how these interact or indeed may conflict with their welfare. Importantly, the bill was subject to full public consultation, which the Scottish Courts and Tribunal Service and the Judiciary fed into. Such stakeholders have spoken to my officials since Mr Whitfield's amendments were lodged and raised that such matters would need careful consideration in terms of systems and resource. The Government is acutely mindful of ensuring new duties on busy public services are properly considered. Lastly, Amendments 66 and 67 appear to put stipulations where a child is unable to form a view. Article 12 of the UNCRC, however, tells us that a child has a right to be heard. This is just one example of how these amendments would put unduly prescriptive duties on the court, which could interfere with their own resp responsibilities to act compatibly with the UNCRC. The Government, therefore, cannot support Amendments 63 to 67. Finally, Amendment 84 seeks to place a broad review and reporting duty on ministers regarding children involved in the hearing system and in criminal proceedings. I thank Ms Maguire for the sentiment in her amendment here and for the engagement that she has shown across the bill. However, there are a number of issues with this proposal. Firstly, the amendment as drafted is extremely wide in scope, with implications for every criminal justice agency, as well as the children's hearing system and likely social work. These organisations have not been consulted on this level of change and the resource implications for each body could be considerable. We do not want to unwittingly divert resources away from frontline services which provide crucial supports. It is unclear if Amendment 84 would require changes to the children's hearing system case management system. Such an undertaking should not be embarked on lightly given the resource and delivery implications for that public body. 
As the member has alluded to, there is a host of work going on in this area. The UNCRC Act provides for a children's rights scheme to be put in place by Scottish ministers in relation to securing better or further affecting the rights of children. This scheme will be informed by consultation with the Commiss Commissioner for Children and Young People and the Scottish Commission on Human Rights and others. It will be revised on a regular basis to capture any emerging issues. Absolutely. Ruth McGuire. I thank the Minister for giving way. I wonder if the Minister would give an indication on the timescales of that work. Minister. It is currently underway and, as I have said, will be consulted on. Unfortunately, I do not have a timescale for that at the moment, but again, I am more than happy to keep the member updated on that. The treatment of children in the justice system is a known area of interest for the Children's Commissioner and others. So, as I have said, something in this area will be forthcoming and will be informed by consultation and will be proportionate in terms of resource implications. There are various amendments lodged from members across parties on reporting requirements. I should say Ms Duncan Glancy has proposed a reporting requirement in Amendment 87, which we will debate in a later group. I believe that amendment sets out a more proportionate approach, which goes some way to meeting the aims of the amendments in this group, and the Government will be supporting it when debated in Group 15. In summary, I cannot support the amendments in this group. I would ask the relevant members not to press them. If they are pressed, I would urge the Chamber to reject them. Thank you, Minister. And I call on Martin Whitfield to wind up and to press or withdraw Amendment 40. I am very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer. <clears throat> it has been a fascinating, almost reflective discussion of what happened um, at Stage 2 with a number of these amendments. And there are certain areas that I think this chamber should seriously be concerned about. In particular, if we start looking with Amendment 40 and the response that the government have made to it, it would seem to me that the argument is, in essence, of course we should take the rights of children as important, and it exists in plenty of other legislation, but we don't need to put it into this legislation. The grounds for that is that almost no specific additions are made through this bill. But of course there are some specific additions that have been made through this bill. And indeed there were indications when the UNCRC was passed that this bill had moved too far to encompass it um, within, within this bill. And, you know, sadly, um, I as an individual accepted that argument for, from the government. But to use the UNCRC as one of the reasons why it's not necessary, I find slightly disingenuous. The UNCRC talks about establishing as a foundational principle the rights of children to be considered at all points, and this is an opportunity to show that we mean that, rather than we are just doing that, or we intend to do it, or we will bring it in. The amendments that the Minister has drawn um, the Chamber's attention to that have lacked the opportunity to properly be investigated both at stage two and out with, um, or, or sorry, with those out with this Chamber, the phrase that she used was lacked the careful consideration that was needed. Um, again, I think this will return later this afternoon with some other amendments that have been put forward because the position that we're in um, is that at stage two, there was going to be um, discussions, or prior to stage two, there were going to be investigations and discussions about it. And the opportunity has only arisen at this stage. I understand what the Minister has said about the opportunity for those out with this place to comment, but it is fair to say a number of the third sector have commented on all of them. I will return to some of the data points later on because I think we will unfortunately or fortunately spend a great deal of this afternoon discussing the importance of identifying objectively and subjectively the effect of the journey through both types of interaction with the state, both at a criminal level and in the children's hearing, for the purpose of legislation that's coming further down the line. So for the purposes of um, this section, Deputy Presiding Officer, I will push Amendment 40. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr Whitfield. The question is that Amendment 40 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed. There will be a division, as this is the first division of the stage uh, three. I suspend for around five minutes to allow members to access the digital voting system. Thank you.